Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our June Savory session. My name is Anna. I am the Community Outreach Coordinator for the SCOPE team. Also here on the line is Jess. Jess, do you want to say hi? Hi, everyone. Yeah, I'm Jess Swan. I'm the Community Manager for the NASA SCOPE project, and we are excited to have you here. Yes, we are. So we before we dive into the topic for today, I'm just going to do a quick highlight of SCOPE. Um, so SCOPE is a community of practice. The community that we serve um, is the NASA Science Activation Teams, and they specialize in doing educational outreach um, all across the United States and also the SMEs, uh, so subject matter experts such as yourselves, um, and that also includes early career scientists. Um, so basically, we try to connect uh, these SMEs and early career scientists to the NASA science activation teams to help uh, doing that educational outreach. The domain that we serve, or the domain in which we do this, is through um, earth and space science and engineering education. And um, our goal is to broaden participation of a broaden participation and engaging learners of all ages. And we do this, um, our practice is by, is creating inspiring educational materials uh, and experiences that are effective, true to science and are inclusive of all audiences. Um, and the way we do those is by having this community um, of practice. One of our ways is doing like a best practices community. So we develop and disseminate best practices, guidelines and strategies. And we are also a, a knowledge steward knowledge stewarding uh, community of practice. So we organize, manage, and steward a body of knowledge. And that's what makes up our NASA scope community of practice. Um, so we are going to dive in to our savory snack. Um, today, our savory snack comes from Turkey. It's called boric. Um, they can be baked, fried, cooked on a griddle, or boiled. It's a paper thin phyllo dough and it's wrapped around savory fillings. Um, and the resulting dish is enjoyed at any time of the day. So our question for you all is, what savory ingredient is typically used for boric filling? And you can put your um, predictions in the chat and I'll just give you like a quick 60 seconds just to answer your question. So the, the options are cheese, chocolate, bacon, or vinegar? Which of these is typically used uh, for boric filling? And I gave you a little hint there since one of the options is clearly not savory. So that one was a little help. All right, I see some answers in the chat. Let's go and see what the right answer is. Okay, so the correct answer is cheese. Um, and this picture here actually has cheese and spinach, which is delicious. Um, anything with cheese and spinach, I'm, I love it. Um, so now we're going to move on to our topic for today. So we will be discussing, I will be introducing a new program actually that we, um, just started here, um, within the scope team. So this is the SACNAS SIAC affiliate program. Um, we are, oops, excuse me. I have to move this over. Okay. So the purpose of this program is to support historically marginalized early career scientists, SMEs, as I mentioned earlier, um, to engage with educational outreach opportunities, which is the SIAC teams, um, and training um, for those that wish to attend the, the SACNAS National Diversity in STEM Conference. This conference is going to take place on October 31st through November 2nd. Um, they, this will be held in Phoenix, Arizona this year. Um, and, uh, in case some of you don't, aren't aware, the NASA science activation team is a program, is a network of collaborative projects that seek to connect, um, 
NASA science with diverse learners of all ages. And the SIAC goal um, is working to activate minds, deepen the understanding of our world and beyond, and create learner pathways to STEM careers. Um, let me move to the next slide. So some of the really important aspects of this program, um, we are providing 10 participants funding stipends to the conference at $2,000 each. So this can cover your flight, um, your hotel accommodations. Um, so be mindful of those as you're planning your trip or planning to apply for the, the SACNAS affiliate program. And some quick dates that are really important for you to remember are July 17th, that's when applications are going to open. It's a Wednesday. Um, and so they will close on the 30th and you will be notified within 30 days if you were awarded a stipend or not, a travel grant, excuse me, or not. Um, the requirements are you must be a US citizen or permanent resident, also known as a green card holder. Um, you have to be a PhD candidate or postdoctoral scholar. Um, part of that, uh, part of the requirements is also that you tend, attend a virtual workshop the week before the conference. So I have it listed here. It's from 8.30 to 3 p.m. Pacific time. And that is just for you to learn um, all about science communication, um, how to better deliver um, your research, uh, you know, if you're talking to like, you know, different diverse groups, um, it's just a really uh, intense kind of workshop where you get to learn all about science communication. Um, you also are required, we're also asking people to sign up and attend the in-person SIAC networking table sessions. That will be uh, part of the SACNAS um, normal schedule. So it's not like you have to go you know, attend a different thing. This is happening while the conference is going on. So it will be at the same time as the conference. Um, We're also asking that you attend a virtual networking event um, within the year. Um, so our next virtual networking session will be October, sorry, excuse me, August um, 20th, and it's going to be a BIPOC STEM panel. And then the next one will be uh, November 5th which is going to be another science communication best practices. So we will have more information on that. You'll get more emails from me on those too, um, but just to keep everybody engaged throughout the year, um, these are the things that you're going to be looking forward to um, as part of being a SACNAS affiliate. Um, other aspects of the program, as I mentioned, the communications workshop, this will be held on October 25th. Um, and AGU is going to be sharing their best practices. Um, so that's going to be really awesome. They are professionals and they have a ton of, of knowledge and research to share. Um, the networking tables, as I mentioned, um, this is going to be happening during the actual conference. And so you'll have the opportunity to meet different SIAC teams. They will be there um, having different like kind of interview sessions where you'll be able to talk and get to know all the SIAC teams. Um, there's going to be presentation opportunities so you can practice, um, like I said, your research, delivering your research. Um, and that's kind of related to the communications workshop. You're also going to have these lasting connections um, because you're going to meet other people who are also early career scientists and engineers who are attending the conference. And what makes SACNAS um, so special is that it is serving um, a community that is often, it is underrepresented um, within all fields of STEM. So the SACNAS, in case everyone doesn't know, the SACNAS is the Society for the Advancement of Chicano and Native Americans in STEM. And so um, if you identify with any of those um, historically marginalized groups, we really urge you to apply. This conference is not like any other um, where diversity is the forefront and um, we're they're really encouraging everyone to come in your traditional regalia if you, um, if you do happen to attend a conference. Um, so if you have not had the opportunity to go to SACNAS, um, this, this is a great, great um, program. So 
getting to the applications. As I mentioned, the applications open on July 17th, and these are some of the questions that you can expect to see on the application uh, page. So one of them is to describe uh, your hope, what you hope to gain from your participation in the SACNAS affiliate program. Number two is what do you think is the value of educational outreach? Uh, the third one is consider one aspect of your work uh, that you want to share with the public and describe why you think it's important for the public to understand this aspect of your work. This bolded part on the bottom is really, really important. So if you are a PhD candidate, you will need a letter of support from your advisor acknowledging your time commitment to this program. So um, when, you're fin when you're filling out the application, there's gonna be a section that asks what career stage you're in. So if you submit, if you select that you're a PhD candidate, um, you will need to upload um, or email me after you complete the application saying, you know, attach the, the letter from your advisor. Um, and so that's like the one uh, key thing that we really ask for PhD candidates to please, please submit um, the letter of support from your advisor. Okay, so I'm gonna open up the floor to some questions here in just a second, but this is the QR code to the SACNAS affiliate webpage. As I mentioned, the applications are not open yet, but they will be open soon. Um, so here in about two weeks, a little more than two weeks, um, the applications are gonna open and you can follow this QR code link. And at the bottom of the page, it's going to say apply or submit an application. Um, and so that's the link that you're going to use to submit an application. As I mentioned, they're due July 31st. So this is really, really important. Please have those in before July 31st. It's only open for two weeks. Um, and if you have any questions, you know, after this meeting or anything, please email uh, myself. My email's on here, ana.aranda at asu.edu, um, or Jess, who's also here at jlswan at asu.edu. 